Hello and welcome. The US President Donald Trump has extended a pause on some green cards and suspended visas for other foreign workers until the end of 2020. Now, high skill tech workers, non-agricultural helpers, au pairs and top executives are amongst the many affected. But the ones that are really affected are obviously the H-1B visa category workers, most of whom come from India. Now, there are some 85,000 spots that are accessible or available for H-1B workers, typically those who come from uh, IT companies or information technology companies from countries like India once again. And India has uh, usually garnered the lion's share of that. Now, this announcement uh, is not a new one in itself, but it's an extension. But let's try and understand what this uh, announcement means uh, in general, as well as in specific, and what is it, uh, or should we be viewing it in the context of? To discuss this, I'm uh, pleased to be joined once again by Purvi Chotani, managing partner of uh, LockWest, a uh, legal and immigration firm based out of Mumbai and Florida. Purvi, thank you very much for uh, coming back. Hi, thank you for inviting me. Right. So tell us, what does this announcement mean? So it means many things to many people and a lot of it depends on where you are and on what visa. So if you are within the United States um, and your visa has expired, but your legal status is valid, you're safe. There's absolutely no problem. But the thing is, don't leave the country. Continue to remain there. If you are outside the United States and you have a visa that was issued before June 22nd, you should still be able to travel to America. Now, that, of course, depends on the airlines flying there, etc. But if you are outside the United States and you don't have a visa, you're not going to get one at least till the end of December. So they, this is an entry ban. They have not made announcement about the visa issuance, but it's an entry ban that's in effect till the end of the year. Right. So what is the normal utilization? So like right now where we are, how many people could uh, would there be already uh, on these visas in the United States? How many might be here stuck and how many are potentially applying at uh, or at any time and maybe right now? Right. So the number of people in the United States on an H-1B visa, the number, uh, it depends. Nobody's really tracking it, but it depends. It's something like 300,000 people are on H-1B. But the number could be different because many of them are on green green card track and still continue to uh, maintain H-1B status. Um, but the number of people who are stuck in India, it's a mix of H-1B workers, L-1 uh, executives and specialized knowledge workers and their spouses or children. And by some reports, it appears that there are about 1,000 odd people stuck over here. This is the smaller number. Yes, this is a devastating number in terms of what it's doing to families. Families have been sort of separated for um, a long time already because of COVID, but now the separation is going to be even longer. But the uh, bigger impact is going to be on the H-1B cap beneficiaries because we just had the cap selection in April and a new batch of 65 to 85,000 employees from here will go to the United States on H-1B and they would have started working on October 1st of 2020. However, with this ban, the earliest I can see them going is January. But again, that depends on when visa services are um, commenced again, when they start again. At the moment, till the end of December, I don't think they're going to start visa services. So these people cannot travel. So you're saying there is a batch of people who have already got the uh, H-1B visas but cannot travel right now. Yes. Um, it, no, I'm not saying that they already have their H-1B visa. So these are people that um, are going to get their H-1B visa. Their petitions are going to get approved and they need H-1B visas to go to travel. There. These are first time travelers. These are the first time mm -hmm. they're going to go there in H-1B category. Uh, the other category that I said, the thousand on people who are stuck here, these were people who came either to uh, on a vacation or for a family visit to visit an ailing or a dying parent and they got stuck here because of COVID. Now, generally, when you're within the United States, your visa may have expired, but you're still in legal status. You're still in lawful status. However, once you leave the country, you need a new visa to go back. And that's why right. they are stuck here. Right. So uh, how are you broadly seeing this? So, uh, uh, I mean, Trump uh, has obviously been accused of, uh, you know, using this to keep people out. Uh, rather than uh, a specific H-1B uh, uh, limit. Now, uh, I mean, from a from a uh, 
I mean, from the manner in which it's likely to play out, uh, even at the end of the year, what is likely to happen, and what are you what are you projecting? So the first thing that I think is that this is not really about protecting jobs because if you see the logic of it in his in his proclamation, there are numbers like. 525,000 odd people are going to be kept out of the United States to save jobs for Americans. But the number of people that have lost jobs in America is 17 million plus. So how does that 500,000 save 17 million jobs? That logic I haven't understood. Um, I don't know if anyone has. And the second part is this is po political posturing in my view because he is going into a re-election quarter now and anything he can do to appeal to his vote bank he is doing and this is one of the things that will appeal to them the people that don't realize that it's not the foreign workers taking away the jobs it's the falling economy that is taking away jobs right Right. So, uh, last question. You know, so what are you advising uh, uh, those clients who are obviously wanting to send someone there, or uh, companies in the United States who want to bring uh, tech workers or people? I'm, I'm assuming mostly in the IT space uh, uh, right. to the US. Uh, maybe when things start improving. Right. So, the, uh, what we are advising them is you should go ahead with your H-1B processing because getting selected in the lottery is a big deal. Only about 25 to 28 percent of the cases filed got selected in the lottery. Now, if you don't file now, you're going to lose that spot. So, if even if you feel that your situation may change or your uh, manpower requirements, you'll have to rejig. It's better to file now as long as you have a job for them in America, because you can always file a petition to amend later on. Uh, but these are valuable spots. Right, uh, Purvi Chotani, thank you so much uh, once again for joining us and uh, walking us through what it means uh, for those who are applying and those who have obviously already applied and are standing by. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me and have a good evening. Bye. You too.